Johnny, I got to get out of here soon. It's game night. What do you like most about game night? Getting together with people and playing games, getting away from the phones, getting away from the computers. I just want to enjoy time with people. We want to tell you about Gamebox Monthly. It's an amazing subscription service that sends indie tabletop games, games that are not at Toys R Us or anything else, Scotty. Oh, these are unique uh, games created by uh, these creators getting their vision out. That's right. And it's really easy. You go to GameboxMonthly.com and you're going to get games you've never seen before, you've never played before. And for when you have people over, guess what? That's a whole night of entertainment. You don't have to deal with traffic or going to a nightclub or going to the discotheque. You could do it right at home and play these amazing indie tabletop games. So wait a second. Gamebox Monthly might just send me the same game every month i wouldn't want that i say nay sir well, every single month you're guaranteed to get brand new tabletop games what yes. can i customize it so that way I, I say like hey maybe i like the two-player game you can do it any oh. way you want and customize it so make sure you go visit gameboxmonthly.com and rediscover social wrestling hey. buddies want to be your buddy hey buddy buddy You got me mad now. No matter where on planet Earth you're joining us from, we welcome you to the Wrestling and Padre Slamcast on Dragon Wagon Radio. Make sure you follow Dragon Wagon at It's Dragon Wagon on all social media platforms. We are at Compadre Show on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Compadres. You know what, guys? Happy Thanksgiving. This show is coming to you early this week because Survivor Series is in the books, and we want to make sure you get all this content before all the tryptophan kicks in and you're just passing out trying to catch up on episodes of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and everything else on Netflix. Yeah, I just dropped that reference. I've never even seen an episode. That's how in the know I am on pop culture. Anyways, I'm Johnny the Quasto. Find me at Jay Quasto on all social medias. The man to my right. He is the host of the Trusty Sidekick podcast, as well as uh, one of the stars of the Ultimate Schmodown with Collider. You see him everywhere on the internet at Mr. J Washington. He is Mr. J Washington. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm just happy you did an Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt reference. Yeah. I never watched it myself, but you just dropped it so fluidly. Like, yo, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, gonna binge on that. I was like, yo. Because I hear people say it all the time. Oh, my God, I got to catch up on Kimmy Schmidt. And does I know it's every, a great wait, show. First of all, does everybody say it like that? Oh, my yes. God, I got to catch up on Kimmy Schmidt. Of course. Even every grown man you meet? Every grown-ass man says it. Oh, my God, Daddy, I have to catch up on Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah. Okay. I'm still on midway through season two of Stranger Things. Which I'm way means, behind. I've been telling you this for the longest. You need to get your life together. I'm trying to get my... I know you're almost done with Punisher already. It came out like two hours hey, ago. Hey, man, that's my job. That's what we do at the Trusty <laughs> Sidekick. I have to watch all but this. Punisher more. came out this morning and Jay's on episode <laughs> 10 already. Hey, man, I don't, have a, I don't have a relationship, so I can do these things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either, and I still can't figure my life out. Hey, man, that's not my fault. <laughs> I'll tell you what. And coming to us from now, he's back in Washington, D.C., but he was there live for TakeOver. He sat down with... Well, the phenomenal AJ Styles, who put on just an incredible match with Brock Lesnar. We're going to hear from Dale and AJ a little bit later on in the show, but you follow him everywhere at The Walking Dale. He's Dale Rutledge. What up, buddy? Hey, buddy. What's up, guys? Feels good to be back. Uh, just some advice, though. Johnny, you really should check out Unbreakable. It's really good. But I, I know it's genius. I saw something about a, a Teddy Ruxpin that was, like, obnoxious or something. I saw one scene that cracked my shit up. <laughs> It has every 90s reference that you could imagine. It is your jam, oh, my friend. That's my dream. First of all, Dale, you never, Johnny probably hasn't told you about the time we came back from a show and we did all 90s hip hop in the car coming back. Oh, yeah. We had oh, that, boy. That solidified our friendship right there for me. You know what really did it for me is we kept quoting the movie Life with Martin Lawrence and Eddie Murphy. Because <laughs> we, we both agree it's one of the greatest movies, movies of all time. time. Yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> the upper room with Jesus. Yeah, we, got, we, we, can't, we do that all day. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> Let, let's not, though. Let's not. <laughs> Fair enough. Scott Narver is on assignment somewhere in the United States, so he will not be joining us this week. But best believe he should be back uh, next week, which is great. So... Wow, there's a lot to talk about in the world of professional wrestling. I mean, Survivor Series was almost four hours long. TakeOver was three hours long. A lot of things happened. Some of it was amazing. Some of it was confusing. So I think let's start off first with the Slamcast News. We're 
We're going to start off not the greatest news in the world. You know, the main event, uh, well, it wasn't the War Games was the main event at TakeOver, but the title match, the NXT title match, uh, Drew McIntyre apparently really hurt his left bicep. Yes, he did. He's going to see a doctor. Uh, Obviously, they're going to have to do an MRI once the swelling goes down, but it sounds like they're expecting it to be a bicep tear. And, you know, Mm -hmm. the way it works with bicep tears, the average person who's not an athlete, you can live without fixing a bicep tear. You have enough other muscles to make up for it. But when you're a high-level athlete like Drew McIntyre, bottom line is he's going to have to get it repaired if it indeed is a bicep tear, which is just, uh, you know, it, it's a real bummer because, man, you saw the the dejected look in his eyes and how sad he was. And, you know, it's really disappointing. It's the last thing anyone expected in that match. That was not I, – I, t- I was telling Johnny Dale that uh, you can look at Drew McIntyre's face after he lost the title – that wasn't a loss as in I just lost the belt. He just knew I w- I'm on the shelf for a while. Yep. He had that look in his face. I'm on the shelf. You know. Yeah, I thought I thought he looked really disparaged and I didn't understand. You know, being in the crowd there, it was hard to tell if it was a work or not. But he yeah, he definitely had a look in his eyes that was I thought he was just a really good actor at that stage. Because and- Andrade, he was he had that look on his face like, wait, I won for real. Yeah. And I, I give them credit for, you know, making it. I, I think Drew realized like when that, you know, the, the massive DDT happened off the ropes. I think Drew realized, well, this is the best moment for the three count. Yeah. And, you know, they all pulled it off like it, it very easily could have been incredibly awkward with the way that happened. But I think Drew knew that, oh, boy, this, you know, I, I guess he could have won the match and then dropped the title. But it's better the way it worked this way because honestly Andrade and Zelina Vega have been completely on fire and I think this is the best possible way it could have happened if if unfortunately he did injure himself as bad as he did the question is do they keep the belt on Andrade for a while I mean granted him and Selena are the best thing going in absolutely NXT you know but do they allow him to run with it for a while like who do you build up behind him now Dale I think it'd be foolish not to. I mean, I, I I think there's still some unfinished business there with Gargano that you could probably plug him into a, a feud coming around mm. uh, Royal Rumble time or something. They have plenty of time to build up whoever they think is is next in line. I mean, Lars is obviously getting some kind of big monster push. They could they could figure out if they like him that much True. that quickly. But I, it's sad if Drew does have to miss it. I mean, I, I would love to see a rematch between these two. This this match was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, Drew McIntyre, say what you will about him. We talk about all the time. He's he's not the most overly exciting character, if you will, but you see his desire and his love, and, you know, no one can doubt that. And the guy's an incredible athlete. He could do pretty much everything. But as far as future opponents, you're right, Dale. The cool thing about Andrade, he's not a huge dude, and he's incredibly athletic. So you could put Gargano up against him, and it makes sense. And if you wanted to have the Undisputed Era attack him, uh, next thing you know, all of a sudden you Adam got... Adam Cole's in the mix. Yeah, all of a sudden you got yeah. Zelina Vega and and uh, Andrade, their faces. So there's a lot of different ways they can go with it. I just think that with her at his side, with her on the mic, you can do no wrong. True. True. I mean, she's... Kept, so you, I'm sorry, Dale, go ahead. So I was just going to ask, do you guys think that they, they called this early then? Like, you think that they realized... How how early in the match did this injury happen? It happened very, very much towards the end, I believe. Yeah, it was and, towards the end. And I don't even okay. know if Andrade necessarily knew exactly what was happening. His English is not that great. I honestly think after that DDT, that was – I think the referee and, and Drew McIntyre knew what was going down, in my opinion. I think that's kind of how they called it. That's what it looks like. It looks like – because, again, when the three count happened, Andrade popped up like it was another spot about to happen. He knew you could look at him and tell that he knew there was something there was another sequence about to happen. Right. So when Selena Vega had to let him know you won, he was like, What? Huh? He had that look on his face, he couldn't believe it. Yeah. So you could tell that like like Johnny just said, I think that was actually a Drew call in the ref, like, yo, I'm hurt, let's go. Take it home, that's it. Yeah. And so it's 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 sad that it had to happen, but like you say, you now you have potential, but the thing becomes, yeah, let's say Drew gets back in about what, six to eight weeks. Oh, no. Bicep tear surgery. I'm sorry. What, like four or five months at the the earliest? That's safer. Four to five months. Yeah. Do you keep Andrade in NXT until then? Or do you bring Drew McIntyre straight up? You see what I'm saying? Which one do you do? You go straight up, I think. You you see what I'm saying? So the feud for them two, do you wait till it continues on a main roster? Or do you just, you know, forget it? Because the, the question becomes also, if they both go up, do they go to the same show? Hmm. 
You see, those. Do you do you think that Andrade is ready to go up just because of of the the way that this is working out with Zelina? Well, I mean, I think he's going to have a, a a nice title run at this point. I I don't see why not. You know, and, and if anything, I think when McIntyre comes back, he goes up to the main roster. But you know, Zelina Vega and and Andrade, they are they have been the most entertaining thing about NXT besides Velveteen Dream and Aleister Black, in my opinion. Even Undisputed Era, they've been great. But nothing's been better than Zelina and Andrade's rise, along with Aleister Black and Velveteen Dream, which we will get to that match. Mm-hmm. Good God Almighty! I that was, was having amazing match. Flashbacks to being a kid in the, the you know the late eighties, early nineties, watching that. It was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, we wish him the best. We hope he doesn't need surgery, but uh, that remains to be seen. Next up, Stephen Amell Dale. I know you love this. He teams up at Ring of Honor with Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, and Cody to take on The Addiction, Flip Gordon, and Scorpio Sky Friday night in San Antonio at the house show. And he went through a damn table. Goes through a table like a <laughs> champ, too. I don't know if you saw the footage from it, but it was it, was, it looked pretty good. Yeah, I, I actually with some, some folks uh, over the weekend, and they're like, wow, he's, he's undefeated. And I'm like, all right, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's had two matches. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> like, slow, slow your roll. Slow your roll was there. <laughs> slow your roll on that one. But if you look at that picture, though, of him with the Bullet Club and them sitting there, that is that is a cool group of dudes. Like, it just – there's something about the fact that you know that uh, him and Cody are actually friends mm-hmm. that just makes it really enjoyable. Like, he's not doing it for publicity. He's not doing it for anything. He's probably just doing it because they're, they're buds and he has a, a real – desire to get in there I so think, I, I don't know I, I think it's pretty cool i think what they started back in the wwe when they were doing the whole stardust versus the green arrow thing the whole little promo and all that and then they became friends yep. and then as you saw Stephen amell got cody a job on arrow sure yep. got him a couple of episodes in so that's a big deal that's a big thing got cody in tv and right. so and because he's a producer now so yeah of course this is like look these are buddies like look i'm bringing you back into my world and then the whole kiss my ass to Vince McMahon all do the too sweet in the wow. ring. Wow. I mean, Amel's like, yo, I got money. <laughs> I got money. Cease and desist me. <laughs> like, I'm making a million. <laughs> a, I'm making a million an episode. I'm good. <laughs> Plus producer credit money. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> And that shirt, the 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 vigilante club shirt, looks pretty dope. I got it. I'm thinking about buying oh. that one. I actually, that's one of those shirts. I'm like, I might get that one. So, question: That is a Stephen Amell. Actually, that's his shirt. That's his shirt because it has the green shirt. arrow mask on it with the uh, with two bows. Oh god damn! That is just in case. Just in case, Bullet Club as a as an entire faction wasn't making enough money. <laughs> they, found, they found a new way to market a new thing. I'm telling you, Dale. They just. It's like. Everything they do, and I don't want to jinx it, everything they do, whether it's Cody or the Bucks or Kenny, it turns to gold. Everything they touch. How long before we see a Vigilante Club shirt on actual Arrow? Hmm. Oh. Are they filming? Oh, uh, yeah, that'd be nice. Well, they're some, done with some guy on the street or something. Yeah, because they're done. I think they're done filming this entire season, if I'm not mistaken. But because it's Stephen Amell's shirt, yeah. and he's a producer on the show, how long before we see one of them shirts pop up and then the shirt sales go crazy? I guarantee he's going to be wearing it online all the time, which is just as good as throwing it on television. Which is just as good for him. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that makes me most excited about this match, Scorpio Sky was in the match with him. Like that's That just goes to show what a great job he's done for Ring of yes. Honor since he finally got his opportunity. And what's cool is at our final event this year, he's going to be in the television title match, which we'll talk, um, uh, which we'll talk about the United TV title match. But it's great to see him. This is a main event match. This this tag. Mm-hmm. So it's so dope to see him in there with the addiction and Flip Gordon. Like that's that's so cool. So moving on, House of Hardcore debuted on Twitch this past weekend in Philly. Uh, obviously, Tommy Dreamer um, has just an incredible uh, promotion there. I believe this was House of Hardcore thirty five, and it had. A ton of really good matches. It had Austin Aries uh, making his return. I actually watched this promo with a live mic. He was in the ring for a good 10, 12 minutes just uh, spitting the truth. He's like, I'm, a, I'm, I'm about the truth now. He's like, this is my thing. And he was really candid and honest. And he said, uh, quite frankly, people want to know why I got released. And he said, I probably got released because I deserved it. And then he elaborated on it. Of course, the fans in Philly were being drunk. And, and at first, they were amazing. And after about three minutes god forbid they have to pay attention to something for more than three minutes <laughs> somewhat like there are five fans that got rambunctious and unfortunately a microphone was close enough to them 
which is really annoying. Oh. But, you know, Aries called him out for being pricks, and it was great, and he he rolled with it, and I thought it was really fantastic. Um, I didn't get a chance to watch the entire event, but uh, my friend uh, Clockwork Angel Catridge, she was the ring announcer. I went to Pakistan with her. It was me, her, and Melissa Santos as the commentary team, so I was really proud of her to be able to do the uh, the ring announcing there. And so it came off really seamless. The, the broadcast looked great, and so congratulations to the entire House of Hardcore team. Oh, that's dope, man. Shout out to Tommy Dreamer for bringing something that gives people that old school feel with some new wrestlers, too, and bringing some of the old back and bringing something where he, people can watch it for free, too, if you can't yep. attend it. Yep, you sure you can. You know, going on Twitch is a great thing to do that. So shout out to Tommy Dreamer and the entire crew for that, definitely. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, uh, Tim Storm and the NWA World's Heavyweight title was also on the show. And Nick Aldis showed up and confronted both of them because Tommy Dreamer said he wanted a shot at the title. And I, I'll give Nick all his credit. He was really good on the mic. He called Tommy Dreamer the house of hypocrites and all this stuff. And so I don't know what's going on. I, I assume maybe the title is going to be defended on House of Hardcore at some point. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that title, he's hopping around with it. And so it's it's pretty cool to see because, it, you know, it's going to be on our show quite a bit as well. So you're just happy. I wish Dale, I wish you could see Johnny's it's, face when he's talking about it. It's going to be on our show. And he just cheesing. What do you mean, man? Being able to, you know, <laughs> he's just cheesing and glowing. Being able to call it. Uh, Matt Hardy is close to owning Broken, and I'm really, really hopeful for this. Delete! So we'll know by December 19th if Anthem decides to oppose Matt Hardy getting full control of Broken. Um, he has. To, I, I think they have until December 15th to oppose it, and if they don't, December 19th, the Broken thing, whatever you want to call it, will officially be his to do whatever he wants with it. So fingers crossed. Now for... For a company that is just trying to get their shit together, <laughs> why would why would they even hold on to this? Like, I, it's just so weird that they would even. Why haven't they let it go already? It's so strange. Um, Anth- if you haven't figured it out, Anthem, uh, the the people who run it are very stubborn, and it's called pettiness. Pettiness. <laughs> That's another thing. It's so. an Uber level of petty right there. We can hope it can. I mean, I, I could understand if your if your house was in order, but it's not. So. Just get your own shit together and move on. I don't know. Exactly. Spend money on something else. Exactly. So we can hope for the best there. Uh, James Ellsworth gave a very heartfelt thank you this past week to the fans on Facebook. And uh, he ended it, of course, with the hashtag, any man with two hands has a fighting chance, which is just adorable. Did you hear about one of the plans Vince McMahon had for him had he not been released? This is spreading around. I guess this was real. Yes. So here's. did you hear about this, Dale? His plan? Oh, what is it? What so is the it? plan okay. was... Dale, Dale, grab a seat. You're gonna grab a seat it. for this. You're going to love this one. Vince Uh-oh. McMahon, in his glorious genius in wrestling, was thinking about turning James Ellsworth transgender and having him wrestle for the women's title at WrestleMania, potentially against Charlotte. And then Santina shows up and ruins it all. <laughs> Seriously, we already did that shit. We already did it, but this this is Vince McMahon. He probably doesn't remember. So <laughs> just recycle the like, damn gimmick. Transgender, transgender is hot right now. <laughs> well, the thing is, though, I think Santina was clearly him jo- joking around. I think they wanted this to be a legit life change for the character. Yeah, they wanted this to be a legit life change that he couldn't be respected as a guy. He's always felt like a woman, and he legit becomes a woman as a worker and competes in the women's division. Mm-hmm. That's a slap. How, how, how does that? How does that strike you all when you first heard it? Uh, it's a slap in the face of every woman on the SmackDown roster. It, it's it's it would have gotten a lot of social media attention. But. It's shockingly topical, though. I will I will say that yeah. like yeah, it's horrible for the women's division as a wrestling fan, but as like a media lightning rod, would that be something that would even be good press for them? I'm not well. I. Completely- Sure, but at least it's more accepting than than you would have had from them. I don't know when it was a joke at WrestleMania. What was that? Twenty? When was it? When was it? Since uh, I don't remember. Because that was that was, just, that was just a drag queen, right? Or that was that was like I don't know what we were supposed to think that was besides his sister, right? right. Right. I, I think depending on which way you spin it, they could have spun it as saying, you know, we're in an era right now where unfortunately, you know, transgender people are are fighting for equal rights, and they should not be. It shouldn't even be a question. So they could spin it in the way of saying, look, we want to give transgender people equal rights. If she wants to go after the title, we will let her. Right? Uh Well, they could, but the problem becomes those who will nitpick it and be like, well, yeah, that's fine if you're going to do that. If James Ellsworth was really transgender all the way, that's that's where it's going to be the issue. But that's where they would have spun it. But you're right. It it would have been more important. And I'm sure there is a transgender professional wrestler out there. There has to be. There has to be. Yeah. 
But remember how much he remember how much heat the WWE caught when Billy and Chuck were going to get married. I loved it. Remember that everybody was it. like, "Wait, they about to do what?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think James Ellsworth is kind of like this weird. Uh, he his whole run was kind of in this. Uh, he could do no wrong sort of place. So I wonder it being specifically him, if it would go over with the crowd or if, or if it would just be like terrible. Anyway, that's, that's, that's interesting. It's interesting to think that, that Vince is even spinning ideas like that in his head. Cause I mean, I, I feel like it would be a, a terrible train wreck, <laughs> but I, I do like, I do like the progressiveness of it at least. Sure. Right. But yeah. A real, a real transgender wrestler would be way more appropriate, but I don't know. I, Somehow feel like James Ellsworth could have pulled it off. We actually talk about James Ellsworth a little bit in the uh, interview with AJ Styles, so so make sure to stick around for that. Well, yeah, he's two and zero against him for God's sake. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And lastly, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. We have our final show of the year, December third. It's called Milestone. It celebrates our seven year anniversary. The card is incredible. We got. Eric Watts versus Bad Dude Tito for the Hollywood Heritage title. Scorpio Sky versus Rocky Romero for the United Television title. Uh, PPA, professional Peter Avalon, who's been on the show, versus Ray Rosas in a steel cage match. Reno Scum taking on Pack 3 for the United Tag Team titles. And Jack Swagger taking on Brian Cage. Uh, That's going to be a big one as well. So needless to say, if you're in Southern California on Sunday, December 3rd, make it out to Milestone. Hit me up on social media. I can tell you exactly how to get there all the important information. So with that said, that's the Slamcast News. Okay, we need to get to Survivor Series right off the top. Let's get into it. Dale, the five on five. Team Raw wins. Uh, The young upstart Triple H and Braun Strowman (laughs) are the survivors. Okay, take me to your brain because I know what my brain was thinking, which I don't know. I still it was all like kind of a I blacked out, I think. Take me to the final five minutes of that match when it's down to Shane and Angle, Triple H, and Braun, and then Triple H gets Shane out of the ankle lock, and then pedigrees Kurt and helps Shane pin Kurt, and then pedigrees Shane, and then wins the match, and then stares at Braun and gets cocky, and then Braun... Go ahead. I don't know. <laughs> Braun does Braun. <laughs> Please. Braun does Braun. Yeah, I... <laughs> You know, I don't know. This is this was an interesting match. I was into it going into it. Um, it. It was just weird to me that there, that nobody was really getting over except for the guy who's absolutely the most over already, Braun Strowman. So I was I was surprised to see all the younger air quote younger because this was probably the oldest group of guys we've had in a Survivor Series maybe ever. I'm not I'm not sure, but like <laughs> collectively, it was a lot of older guys. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I was very, I was just very confused. And why was Braun mad? I didn't really understand it. <laughs> well, what you do don't you... betray the team. I don't like stars. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, just really a raw guy, apparently. What, what do you think the? Why the finish? What? What does that do? Does it? Is, Triple H and Braun at the next Raw pay per view before the Royal Rumble? No, it's not. I hey, look, that Triple- is. I'm telling you, it's Triple H and Braun in a match. They're going to tease it. They're going to tease it on Raw. And then you get Triple H and Braun at the last Raw pay per view because there's no way in heaven or hell we get Triple H and Braun at WrestleMania. Because, exactly. You see, no, you just- no, but my, my, okay, fine. If that happens, why pedigree Kurt Angle? He can come out on Raw and say, well, my wife made me. But earlier in the night, the wife is like, I want you to pulverize Shane, blah, 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 blah. So. It's all about family. No, it's not. But that she was saying she it's wanted family. She wanted Kurt Angle to snap her brother's ankle. Hey, listen, it's family, and he don't want Braun don't like scarves. <laughs> I don't like scarves. <laughs> it's, it's, it's got, that's the only thing that, for lack of better words, makes sense. Okay, because it was like, oh, Triple H wants to do. He's Kurt's got the ankle lock in, and it's about to break Shane's ankle. Then all of a sudden, Triple H is like, you know what? Don't do that no more. <sighs> Dale, do you have an answer? Because I can't come up with one. The only thing I could come up with is that, like, they didn't trust Kurt Angle to win it for them. Like, I, I feel like they could say, I mean, we're recording this before Raw, so I'm sure we don't even really have to hypothesize for too long. Uh-huh. But I, I feel like it's kind of a, uh, 
we, 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 you failed too many times. We don't trust you. So we took you out of the equation and, and left it to triple H to win for us by misdirection. But he had Shane's ankle snapped. Like Shane was legit about to tap out though. You think it's, it goes back to him being a GM. Like you think triple H, is this a way to get the authority back in charge? They want to fire. Of course it is. Okay. (laughs) Triple H needs to be on TV. I don't, we we don't know how long Kurt's uh, contract is either. I don't know either how physically well he is to like, to me, it's like, this seems like it would be setting up something between triple H and Kurt angle, which I don't know why you would put two older guys in a, in a mania event like that. I feel like you want to put over a younger talent, but right. um, I just don't know if Kurt can go mano a mano at, at this stage. Like it, it's, it's a little worrying the way he can't even walk to the ring normal. So I just don't know if they would put that much pressure on him to have a match against Triple H, who arguably needs a younger guy to help work a match as well, uh, just for his, his, the pacing wise. So I, I'm not sure. I don't know. It doesn't make will, a lot of sense. I will say this. I like Kurt Angle's MVP type singlet. Sure. He gave him a singlet with a zipper. I was like, oh, Kurt can't pull up the straps on his own. It was, very, it was very Captain America-y. With very big Captain, a. Yeah, Captain America-ish yeah. with the big A and a zipper. But I think... I mean, it, we see Kurt with a hamstring injury that we have no explanation for. Well, it could be quad, too. When you're taped up like that, it Either could be Either or, we still have no explanation for it. Yeah. Um, it's just, I, again, I'm thinking Triple H. I, I, initially, like I just like we were saying, Dale, I think Triple H uh, angle at Mania. I'm believing that. Unless it was, because initially it was probably going to be angle Shane at Mania. I don't know, but either way it goes, Kurt Angle is wrestling at WrestleMania. Let's just keep it real. Mm. It's going to be unfortunate no matter who it's against, but Kurt Angle is wrestling at WrestleMania, and he's going to do yeah. a moonsault, and we're all going to feel like the end of the wrestling when we saw Randy the Ram get on the top rope and his heart was about to die. Oh, man. That's exactly how we're going to feel. Damn it, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I think, I mean, I know they're on different brands, but. And it does, they're really not eluding. Jason Jordan didn't even show up to the damn pay per view, but no, he was in the back. I, I, he was in the back. He was in the back. He cut an interview. He was mad. <laughs> he was still crying. I guess that, I guess that counts. <laughs> well, see, here's what I was but expecting. What, what, ring in his chair. That didn't make any sense. Right. Here's what I when, when they did the backstage interview with Jason Jordan. I'm thinking, all right. There, and I even said it to we were watching as a group. I said, there's no way he's not getting involved in the main event if they're talking to him right now. Right. I'm thinking this is a perfect opportunity for Jordan to come down completely bitter and angry screw team raw get you know all of a sudden get in bad favor with his dad then his dad gets criticism for for you know trusting whatever and i'm thinking we're getting all this this is the way for jordan to become like a a monster evil kind of guy and then we just (laughs) i'm just laughing so hard because i bet mr man was like jason can you cry all the way down to the ring just have the tears flowing your father he hurts you he doesn't care (laughs) And James and George like, I'm, 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 I'm crying. I've right got now. it. Just bring bring vegetables down to the ring, and you can throw vegetables at your dad. We got <laughs> we've got the shopping cart in the back. We had a, we had an intern go grocery shopping. You bring all the lettuce. Oh. <laughs> I just. <laughs> And again, you say you say there's no reason, but again, we have to just be honest. It's Vince McMahon. He's done a lot of things that have absolutely no purpose at all. Mm-hmm. And this was one of, again. You should you didn't you didn't even need to show Jason Jordan. You could have showed Jason Jordan watching the Survivor Series from home. Okay, right, they right. could have did a figure with him sitting in his hotel room just pouting. Yeah. Jason Jordan, there's a box of there's a box of tissues and snotty <laughs> rags all over the place. Literally. That would have been better than showing him actually at Survivor Series with the Team Raw shirt on. That would have been way better. <laughs> I mean, maybe this all materialized. I don't know. Um, Braun eliminates three people, including Nakamura and Rude. They were the first eliminated for SmackDown. I was very surprised that Orton and Shane, of all people, were the final two left on Team SmackDown. The two people who... Obviously, Shane's not even an active participant, and Orton's kind of just been floating around. With- he didn't or- Randy Orton came to the ring like, I really don't want to be here, but uh, my contract <laughs> says I got to get paid to do this, so here we are. Yeah. Shinsuke Nakamura. And, and who? Go so ahead. that means that they thought, they thought that the, the setup for braun triple h was way more important than helping any of the new guys get over yeah if, if that's the case if that's the match we're really going for i i thought survivor series i thought this five on five match could have legitimately set up three or four different things which is what i think was supposed to happen 
Again, Finn Balor served no purpose in that match. Samoa Joe served no purpose. Yeah. Shinsuke Nakamura looked like a CNA in that match. Bobby Roode looks so small compared to Triple H. It's just like, yeah, we're just going to throw you in here to hear glorious. Like, it, and then you, oh, let's not forget the run out at the end, towards the end with uh, oh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. They were on the pre-show. And they were on the pre-show. So it's like, what was the purpose? And they were trying to sabotage their own show. And it's like, yeah, and which, 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 by the way, I really loved the sabotage angle. Like, I like them coming out and being like, yo, screw you for not putting us on the team. But they didn't get anybody eliminated. They really didn't serve anything story wise except for just continuing how mad they are. And then Shane just pulled out a chair and shooed them off. So I, that was I, it. I didn't really get it. It made no sense. Again, all of the newer guys should have been the team for SmackDown. Right. Yeah. Those, those should have been the team because. At the end of the day, you want to, you're putting Cena on a team, somebody who's not going to be there. Again, Randy Orton doesn't care. Shane McMahon's a part-timer. All those spots could have been Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, or somebody, and Dolph Ziggler, for instance. Or Rusev. Bray Wyatt ain't even on there. Where's Bray, Bray Wyatt? Bray Wyatt could have been on the Raw team. Oh, my God. He was not even. He wasn't even there. Wow. Again, this. There. I don't know where they got so I don't know where they got so caught up in the the, the rush of we got to make a better card because when they put what they put out initially was going to be gender versus Brock. Look, Brock and AJ loved it. It was amazing. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Wow. When they switched that up, it was like, okay, cool. But when you decide to make the traditional five on five guys match and you do, oh, we need all these quote unquote big stars. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. Oh no, I, I agree. I look all three title changes that happened quick. In hindsight, completely understand why. Brock and AJ were as good as you could have asked yes. for. Charlotte and Alexa crushed it. And I think they were better yeah. than most people thought. Yes. And Usos in the bar. Look, whether it's Usos or the New Day, that match would have been phenomenal. And, of course, Usos in the bar were phenomenal. Right. So I understand all those title changes. But you're right. And I the five on five, hmm, I don't know. Because now we're going to have a bragging rights pay-per-view come up again. I guarantee you. <laughs> no way. And we don't need that. We already know now. They can't. They can't. They just told us 87 times that this is the one time of the year that Raw and SmackDown meet against each other. That's they what they told. That's what they told us. That's what they said that all the time. <laughs> uh huh. But they that's still- true. They did. They did tell us John Cena and The Rock were once in a lifetime. So. Yeah, right. We got them in a rematch. So we're never going to see this again. This will never. John Cena and Rock. You'll never see this again. This Try is the only time. To- this is the only time Except for the very following year. The very following year. I mean, what? Like the very next night after they, they wrestled at WrestleMania, John Cena comes out. Hey, man, you want to do this again next year? Sure. What? Twice in a lifetime, bro. <laughs> so, again, it makes no sense. And they're going to try to explain this over the next two nights, how all this fits out of what just happened for that five on five. And it makes no, because Cena's gone. Okay. Cena's the quote unquote hottest free agent. I don't know why he's a free agent out of everybody. Yeah, and he he definitely got pinned. He got pinned in the middle of the match. Like, yeah, it was like, I'm here. I'll just try to get a quick pop and sell some new shirts, and I'm gone. Because that's literally all he was there for. Mm-hmm. But And why why not keep him in longer than Orton if 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 you're going to have it go down to two being Shane and one of the two of those that guys? That makes exact, and that makes more sense than anything. Have it be Cena instead of Orton. Yeah. yeah. But, again... Huh. Well, anyways, uh, moving on. I, I would you want, though, are they, is this all just recouping from the fact that they had to, like, pop the bottle early on Kurt Angle? Because, you know, I mean, it, it seems like the, the model was they wanted to have, like, an older guy come back for Survivor Series a la Goldberg. And then because of all the illness, they had to push Kurt up and then that messed up the shield, you know, as well. So all these things had to be reshuffled. Was this just, like, did they just not recover the way? That's what it seems I don't know, like. I, felt like something was something was off and they weren't able to fully fix it before the pay-per-view was upon them. I agree because the Shield was not supposed to win. The Shield were not supposed to win. Why? Because they would have won a TLC. Yeah. The Shield were not supposed to win. The only reason the Shield won was because the three of them couldn't win together at a pay-per-view yet. Mm. They had to win this one because they didn't win a TLC. Mm. Yeah, everybody will say, well, it was it was Kurt Angle, Seth Rollins, and Dean Ambrose. That's not the Shield. The Shield has to win together at a pay per view, mm-hmm. and they did. That's the only. The New Day would have beat them at this. I gar- I agree, Dale. It's not. They haven't recovered everything. The deck is still shuffled. They don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh. Um, but that match. That match was pretty glorious. So I did love the the Shield versus uh, the New Day. Oh, it was a great way to very, start. Very, very good match. And I think if if it were to happen again, I think you just keep up in the stakes, kind of like the Usos and New Day did, and it could just you know 
keep getting better and better. Now, when it comes to Brock and AJ, Paul Heyman was quoted afterwards. They did, you know, a, a exclusive online segment. Mm-hmm. And boy, the stuff he said about AJ was so on point. And here's one quote. He said, everything that Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart and Ric Flair were to their generation, he has updated it. The single most phenomenal performer I have ever seen is what he said about AJ Styles. Then, of course, he went on to talk about Brock. But he, you can't argue. I mean, AJ, that match, and Brock was getting the crap beat out of him. And he's so good at that, too. Jake and I were talking mm. before we recorded. Brock did one thing we've never seen in a while. Or even whether he's done it before, we haven't seen in a while. The way he sold the hell out that calf crusher. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. Sold, uh-huh. Uh-huh. he sold that calf crusher like he was dying. Even after the match, he couldn't. Put All the way in. home. All yeah. the way home. I was like, you know what, Brock? You didn't go into business for yourself. You are. <laughs> so- no, I, I think that this was, I mean, this was uh, an attribute to how. You know, we say that Brock doesn't care too often. I mean, this this definitely was a match where he went into it and made both guys look good. And it was just, I don't know, It, it while watching this match, I had similar thoughts of like, you know what? I'm so glad that Brock is still around. And I mean, this version of, of Brock only really exists probably due to that decision from uh, him going over on The Undertaker at 30. And and look how long we've gotten to, to revel in this version of Brock. And I, I really think that I don't know if that decision was the best decision, but if that decision is what got us to this point with Brock, yeah, it's it's been a smart business decision for for the company because Brock is still absolutely entertaining in these matches. And you know what it is too? It's the fact that AJ Styles is arguably the most respected, active wrestler in the world. Mm-hmm. And when they made this match, of course, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is a res- he's got the ultimate respect for certain people, and you can tell the way that match played out. Brock Lesnar and AJ Styles, they enjoyed working with each other. And Brock Lesnar was 100% on board. Now, Jinder Mahal, I don't know if that would have been the case so much. But this match, I'm so... Number one, AJ deserves to be champion at all times. Right. And number two, everything about this match from start to finish, it's everything we could have anticipated and everything we could have asked for. And they just really brought it. It was great. Let's do this! (laughs) Well, can we can we give credit to one person who is the uh, unsung hero of this entire match? Paul Heyman. No. The referee. No. Uh, I don't know anyone else who's in it. AJ Styles' is hairdresser. Oh, yeah. Because whoever flat ironed AJ's hair, Ooh. it stayed flawless throughout that. It stayed phenomenal, <laughs> if you would, throughout that. I mean, AJ was getting beat pillar to post, mm-hmm. and his hair still laid down every chance he Now, got. Dale, you are the resident <laughs> hair expert on the show. AJ's hair had a lot of bounce to it. <laughs> his hair was on point now jay's bald as hell my hair is just whatever it's a dude haircut you're the hair person what are your thoughts on his hair i just kind of there was a it's funny that you mentioned the hair because i really wasn't thinking about it but there was some moment where like some draft caught it or whatever and it reminded me of like that wrestlemania Maybe moment you know where it's just, <laughs> like farrah fawcett in the wind Ooh. was right i was like damn that is so funny that aj is like <laughs> The flow like that's so bizarre. It was like that slow mo uh, moment with Fabio in the "I Can't Believe It Not Butter" commercial. <laughs> what a great '90s reference, Johnny. Yep. Um, yeah, I I was uh, I don't know. It's 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 funny to think like, when I asked him about his hair. This was back when everybody kept calling him the soccer mom haircut. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> his hair at that moment and he's like you know what dude i just like to do what everybody else isn't doing so they wear it wet i wear it dry they they have it short i'm growing my <laughs> so it's like i don't think he really cares but it's funny how many conversations about his hair has existed <laughs> oh it's just great and yeah phenomenal match we already talked you know mentioned the usos in the bar were great um corbin and the miz was interesting corbin uh corbin gets the victory and team raw the women's team uh, so team raw really came out on on both five on fives they defeat Team SmackDown. Of course, this was the most predictable. You knew Asuka was going to be sole survivor. She made Tamina and Natalia tap for the win, which uh, only means that Alexa's title reign is going to be First of all, short-lived. can we talk about can we talk about how Tamina took them kicks from Asuka early in the match and she didn't know what to expect because she went in the corner like, get off me! Yeah. <laughs> she grabbed the rope so fast because she didn't think those kicks was going to be that hard. She was like, oh my God, she has never been kicked like that in history. Well, she's never been in the, she hasn't been in the ring that long for, you know. It doesn't matter, but nobody's ever kicked Tamina like that. Like she catches basic kicks and whatnot, but she had never been kicked so stiff when she had to grab, that, that rope grab was not a work that was a shoot like get her away from me yeah. this hurts <laughs> Dale what you think about uh, when we had the Tamina Nia Jax face off that was pretty cool you know 
on paper, had you told me that that was a thing, I didn't even really think about it going into the match, but if you told me about it beforehand, I'd be like, uh, so? <laughs> but it was one of those moments in this match that actually was really exciting. I mean, I think the announcers did a good, that, that announce table was a freaking mess all night, by the way. Like, I don't, <laughs> What was going on with those <laughs> too many people, too many cooks in the kitchen, I guess. But it was whew, what a struggle. But yeah, um, the uh, the moment there, they did a really good job of painting that, reminding people they're related and, and kind of giving a little. And they had one of the better back and forth uh, of people who made sense to, to have go at it at each other. And I, I actually was shocked how much I enjoyed the two of them standing toe to toe. I thought the women's match was really well put together. Becky Lynch being first eliminated, you know, she's going to be completely dejected on Tuesday and maybe that'll lead to something. And, um, how yeah. many times have we said that about Becky Lynch? Well, though? it's true, but I mean, <laughs> look, I, it, look, I'm not faulting Becky. Becky Lynch is phenomenal. No, no, I think I'm she's... just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you fully. I'm just saying that we've seen Becky Lynch have these big opportunities, and then she's dejected, and then we say, well, what does it lead to? And she, they, she's back in like limbo in a sense. Yeah, well, she hasn't had. What was the last time you've seen her in a real good title push and a real good title run? It could happen now. Charlotte's champ. Who knows? Maybe. Okay, keep dreaming. Probably not, but you never know. <laughs> uh, and also, back on when it comes to commentary, so we were watching. It was so loud when we were watching. That, that's kind of bummed me out. I didn't get a chance to listen because I like listening. But judging by quotes mm. I saw on Twitter, Dale, apparently there was a lot of arguing going back and forth between the team, <laughs> like the arguing. It was it was terrible. Like, I don't even know. Did nobody who was who was nobody was directing the show or something like it just felt like people waiting for that empty space and then they would just talk half the time. They weren't even talking to each other. It was just very, and then just <laughs> poor Byron Saxon, just anytime that he would say anything, somebody would be like <laughs> over top of it. You know, I was like, that guy cannot catch a break. Well, didn't guy. he have a quote to Booker where he goes, at least I make sense when I talk at one point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Booker- he did say something those lines, which, it's fair. I mean, Booker T, you over there, Booker getting mad. Hey, listen, so if he put the shoulders down, then he going to pin him. Like, Booker T has the most John Madden-esque type quotes of, of wrestling uh-huh. ever. Like, you're like, Booker, we, we kind of know that. And I, I got much love for Booker Lo- Oh, T. God. Dale, you hung out with Booker this week. I love Booker, too. He's uh, yeah. the best. We went, uh, I went and had dinner with him and Charmel and the kids, and, and I, I love Booker to death, but sometimes <laughs> he'll just take an analogy. I don't, know, I don't know what's going on with him on the mic sometimes. I'm like, what? Well, the funny thing is, Booker's not afraid to laugh at himself either outside of, like, at the commentary booth, he's super serious, but, like, a- after the show, he's not afraid to laugh at himself. Like, oh, yeah, I said that. Okay. Okay, I did. I did. <laughs> but, and I'll say this, too. Look. Doing a two-man commentary team, it's always difficult because you're in the moment. You constantly have to be on your feet. Three-man commentary teams, even more difficult. You got to make sure you're not talking over each other. You have to have one person driving the conversation, kicking back and forth between both. A five-man team, I could not even imagine trying to do it because they didn't have any practice. So I could imagine it was rough, but look, that's a very, very hard thing to ask five people to do when you're not used to that. It's another Vince McMahon and, call. <laughs> yeah, why and why not? You could have that representation. Corey's on both shows. Have Cole and 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 whoever you think is the strongest from SmackDown to compliment those two guys. And then both shows are are represented. You don't need everybody from both shows. <laughs> you're right. I mean you could throw one on the the pre show, the post show, or two of them or whatever you want to do. I, I'm completely in agreement there. Um, yeah, it was very strange because it was, if it had had a better plan going into it, I'd be like, Oh, okay, neat. But it didn't. And it just, it kind of was distracting from the pay-per-view itself. So why, why do that to everybody? Well, let's talk war games. Let's talk takeover because wow, from start to, we always talk about how NXT, they nail the pay-per-views and Mm -hmm. oh boy, this one from start to finish. It was something else. I mean, Velveteen dream and Alistair black, they brought me back to the rivalries when I was a kid. Like, yes. I, I don't want to just say Jake the Snake, Rick Rude, because, you know, I was, I'm sorry, Evolve Teen was doing the Rick Rude, I'm paying homage yeah. to him and everything. But, like, that kind of rivalry where there was no title involved. It was just two polar opposite human beings who did not see eye to eye. One was the antagonist, and he would not stop. And the story these two told in the ring, without needing to do any crazy flippity dippity things, just told an incredible <laughs> story. And at the end, Alistair grabs the mic and finally <laughs> says his name. And you see the look. I'm telling you, man. He said, oh, Patrick Clark is a damn star, and wow. I love the fact I just kept hearing, say my name. Yeah. Say my name. <laughs> <laughs> that was the greatest part. That was the greatest thing to hear the whole time. That's all he wanted the whole time was say my name. 
and and, yep. te- and, and I'm sorry about that, but you hear Nigel him say he technically wins at the end. Well, both of them win. Alistair Black wins the match. Velveteen Dream got him to say his name. <laughs> yep. And even the imitation between the two, like what a great way to tell this story and to be like, yo, I see you, but I I don't give you the significance. I don't know. I thought I thought all of this was just so smart. And then I don't know if you guys saw the show heading into the pay-per-view, just even um, Velveteen like popping up behind Black as he was walking to. He just did it in this like really creepy way. It was just everything about this leading into it was so bizarre, but told so well that it just made this match have the best setup. And then they just brought it home with the actual in-ring ability. And yeah, Patrick Clark is just, what a gift from tough enough. All these, all these people that they, they thought they had something. And then, you know, this guy who actually just grew up loving it. He was one of the few from tough enough who actually on that show said he knew what the hell he was talking about. Right. And Kevin Owens said it best via tweet. He said, um, some to the extent of, I wouldn't worry Velveteen Dream. I think people are going to be saying your name for a long time. And it's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because that dude's got it all. I don't know. What tough enough was this? Are we talking the about? Most this is, this one. is the last the last one. The, the last one I did. So he's no more than a couple of years. Was he wrestling on the Indies before? No. No. He's a no. full he is. he is a full performance and a product. What kind of athlete? Yeah, he's an NXT baby. But he must have been an incredible athlete because look at him. Well, he must have done something. But he put, he put on a lot of that weight since he's been at NXT as well. He was super skinny and tough enough. He yeah. was super like he, strong. He was like toned, but he was not. He, was not, he didn't look like this. Nope. So he's only a couple years in. He's three years in. Oh, my God. Three years in. That is something else. And that Velveteen Dream gimmick is working. Oh, it is. And, and Tommy, and, I'm sorry, Aleister Black, he's been at it for a while. Yes, he has. Yeah. But damn, he's yeah. only a couple of years. That's crazy. That shows a lot. I mean, that, that shows less a lot of credit to both the performance center, Velveteen Dream, as well as Alistair Black to see that, okay, this kid has some. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's work. And because as we know, Alistair Black's been in almost, what, 15, 20 years himself? I don't know. Yeah. He's, I think 18, something like that. Yeah, 18 years. So that to, to be a vet like that and like, all right, this kid can go and I'm not going to let him, I'm not going to hold him back. Right. Some people are just like, I mean, one of my good friends, uh, Royce Isaacs, is like that. He's maybe three years in and you could not tell. He's, he's, Winning titles all over the place right now on the West Coast. He's phenomenal. And I had no idea. I thought he was a, a decade in. No, he's like three or four years. Some people just get it mm-hmm. right away. And then the, you match that with the athleticism and whew, it just takes off. Uh, so Andrade and almost we already talked about new NXT champion. Uh, couldn't be happier for Zelina Vega. I mean, Dale, how many times has she been on the show over the last couple, you know, four years? Probably at least four, five, six times. I mean, we, we love Thea, so any she can do no wrong. So, I mean, you know, we're always going to put her over probably. But this is something that they wouldn't have uh, almost be anything. Like, he was really drowning. Like, yeah. the, it, not just angle-wise, just as a performer. It just seemed like he was, uh, you know, without a paddle. And, and she came in and, and has just creatively they gave them something to do with him. But I also think it, it also helped instill him and, and give him somebody to bounce things off of. Because when I talk to Thea... You know, they discuss they discuss stuff all the time of what would be good and how this could work. And so I think it just helped him have somebody to bounce ideas off of. And it's definitely made him a better in-ring performer just to have her there. And I, what I love about the character is it's not a it's not a romantic thing. It's a strictly business relationship. She is a powerful woman. She's the one behind him. She's the driving force. She's the brains of the operation, if you will. And I think it's it's so much better that way. Like when you watch those two together, you don't even think any possible romance it ain't that it's it's literally just all and i'm glad of that because we normally that's what you normally see when you see a woman a, a female manager mouthpiece yep you'll think oh yeah. I'm like, they're together and in this case we it's established plain as day no that's right. not happening and we've been saying it's it, almost they're, they're almost brother and sister like like there's yes. definitely like a bit of like go get him stupid you know like there's definitely <laughs> like this this playfulness to it that's like She'll slap him in the face to get him to get him doing the right thing. You know what I mean? I don't know. There's something very I like it. I definitely like it. And look, you know, Dale, you and I have known for years. It it was only a matter of time once Thea Zelina was given a shot. She was not only going to take the ball, she was going to run with it. And ain't nobody was going to see that ball again because she just worked relentlessly on her character, on her mic skills, on her ring work, everything to where the moment she had an opportunity it was game over. We knew that was we knew that was the case. I mean, you heard us talk about it on the show all the time, and so it's incredible to see that come to fruition now, isn't it? And oh my God, how about that? Her Karana that she oh. tried 
on Drew McIntyre, and he reversed it all the way back up to the ring where she was just like, well, what? <laughs> She's like, uh, okay, uh, She's all like, right, let me, let's... Back here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, the, the the Spike Rana was just crazy. I mean, the one she did against Roddy Strong weeks back, too, was just... Is incredible. So we could not say a, enough congratulations and enough great things because it's it's awesome when when good people get good opportunities and she is more than than deserved it and more than uh, really you know, come through. That's for sure. So war games, damn, we're talking a fifty minute match, Woo! leaving it all in the ring. Yeah, I'm not even sure what else to say. Undisputed era came out on top uh, without Roddy Strong turning, nothing like that. This is the coolest I've seen Roddy Strong with, uh, you know. Absolutely. Can we talk about who, who, Killian who, who Dane? All he, need, all he needed was a combat vest. Who knew? Yeah. But we got to give credit to Killian Dane. He stole the show. Oh, he sure did. He ah. stole the show. He did a Van Terminator, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, this is really going to happen. I you know, I, I will say, I will say that this was, I mean, this was supposed to be the Undisputed Era's match. In my head going into this, like they should have been the ones that came out and was like, "Ah, oh, shit. Like, it's great that they won mm-hmm. and that's pole off the top. I mean, that's, that's obviously why they took the top off of the, the cage. They, they, somebody fought for that spot to happen or something, or, you know I mean? But either, either way, this was supposed to be their match and Killian Dane. I mean, he made it, he made it his match completely. It's complete. I was like, he was doing so much stuff as a big man myself. I was like, yo, yeah. you're, you're showing all type of athleticism to the point where when they brought him up in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, he was like, I've got a taste of the main roster at the biggest on the biggest stage. I want to be back here. Mm-hmm. What do I have to do? I got to show up and show out at war games. Yep. And all of Sanity did. All of Sanity did. Yeah, all of Sanity did. That's true. You know, Authors of Pain, I, I have a thing like, yo, these are two big dudes. They work well, but they're just big dudes. There's nothing magical right. Right. about the Authors of Pain. Undisputed they're kind of like Demolition. Demolition never did much in the ring. Right. They're kind of like Demolition. Although they're way more athletic than Demolition. Let me just say that. Well, let's conclude that. Uh, Undisputed Era is Undisputed Era. For those of us who followed, who always know about Red Dragon, oh. who know about Adam Cole, we know what they do. Bobby and Kyle were putting it out there. They, they, were doing, they were doing all the Red Dragon stuff. Yeah. They did everything. Yep. But then you got Sanity. Shouts out to Eric Young. Yep. Shouts out to all three of them. They were killing it in this match. I was like, this. Should, even though they didn't go over, they got over. Yeah, yeah no. absolutely. And I actually mm-hmm. felt a little bad for it. Seems like Red Dragon was there to take all the moves, like Kyle O'Reilly specifically. <laughs> yes, oh, he did. Oh my god, <laughs> they were beating the hell out of <laughs> Kyle O'Reilly. Yep. <laughs> or Kyle O'Reilly. He even hit him damn himself with the chair. <laughs> well, yeah, Cole had was, to have the chair bounce off the rope and knock into his own noggin. Cole was hanging out on top of the cage for half the match. <laughs> just just inch warming across the top of that match for like 20 minutes <laughs> he really was doing the army crawl on the top and the whole time like and, and the commentary i thought you know nigel and Morrow were fantastic the entire night but especially for war games you know they were calling it Morrow's like well he's he can't climb out of the cage they'll lose the match and uh you know obviously cole had a, a plan all along but you know, and Morrow was really talking about how how Killian was dominating, and mm-hmm. I'm glad because boy, oh boy, was it it was pretty obvious. Um, and also the women's four way, I thought this was a beautiful, violent symphony from start to finish. A lot of crazy spots, but I also feel like it wasn't overly insane. It was just really fun to watch, and uh, you know, of course, Ember Moon wins with the the double eclipse, and uh, you know, it, I, I guess it's her time. I still feel like character wise, there needs to be more. She just but. shouldn't talk. Uh, that well, was the worst thing happened to her. But the pirate princess, that elbow is the most beautiful thing yeah. I have ever seen. And you got to give it up uh, to Peyton Royce. She's great. Peyton Royce was Peyton, amazing. Uh, Peyton Royce was was probably equally over or the most over, which which really surprised me in the in the live crowd there because uh, I thought for sure Ember would. You know, I mean, she's a Texas native, mm-hmm. so I thought that she would just a hundred percent. But Peyton honestly had the crowd split and uh i was rooting for for sane but uh she she's still living off the high of winning the may young classic so i don't think it did her any harm to not win the title immediately right plus uh, so I, I get i get why they did that i think ember moon being champion it sets up a, a couple of possibilities number one you could have uh you know the the australian iconic duo go after him um or go after her you could also have nikki cross there's no reason why she shouldn't be competing against ember moon for the title so a lot of different options there. Then down the road, Kyrie Sane can can stake her claim as well. So I think uh, I, I thought it makes sense. And boy, oh boy, take over. Can't say enough good things about that. 
Hey, and I, I don't know if you guys got to see it, but you cannot breeze over or not mention at least uh, the Gargano Dunn UK tournament match for the uh, for the pre-show. It was stellar. It, I mean, it, it got the crowd so hyped, and both of those guys, if you guys didn't get to watch it, I didn't. you have to go back and watch it. Cause well, it was, they are going to air it, too. They are going to air it this week on NXT as well. Oh, good. Oh, is it on? Oh, okay, I thought it was the pre-show. I got confused. No, it's, it was the pre-show, but they said they're going to air it on NXT as well. Thank God. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, it was that match was a thing of beauty, and they both were super over with the crowd, and, and it just, I don't know, that, that set the tone for, for the entire night. Okay, I could only imagine how nuts the crowd went for Pete Dunne and Gargano. Are you kidding me? Ugh. Jeez. Yeah, it was it was it was a great time, and uh, I don't know. I just I was so proud of the NXT roster, and so many people have said things to me like, "Oh, you know, NXT is is missing stars," or you know, things about the momentum of NXT, and and I just feel like every pay per view. I mean, sure, sometimes they're week to week. They're trying to figure things out. There's so many people in NXT right now. Sure. that they're trying to like get them all going in at least a direction. But to every time it comes down to these pay-per-views, I am I am more often than not more wowed by this pay-per-view than the, the Raw or SmackDown one that usually, you know, follows it. So I just thought that they did such a great job and, and look how many people we just loved so much. And and these are all guys that aren't on the main roster. Like I don't know. It's it's pretty impressive these these guys that they have down there right now. I really love this iteration of the NXT roster. And that's the thing I've, I've said every time I've been on here people forget that NXT is not meant to be the final stop. Right. This is the starting <laughs> ground. So you're going to lose people. It, it's always going to happen. You're going to keep losing people at NXT. But that's the point. You're supposed to lose these people. And then you're supposed to have this next batch set the precedent of look, I'm your next superstar. And the craziest part is NXT takeovers have constantly put the main roster big shows on notice. Mm-hmm. They, they've constantly done it. It's been you, you'll never see a social media comment that doesn't go. Well, the main roster got their they hands. Cut, you know, saying they were cut out for them. Right. Every show. Half, half the main roster, half the main roster was tweeting about Velveteen Dream and Aleister Black during. And, and it, you know what I mean? It's like they know they know they, they got to keep 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 on keeping on to, to keep up with these younger guys who are hungry. Mm-hmm. We hungry. Want to eat. All right. So real quick, we had a lot to talk about today, but. um. So, Impact, postbound for glory. A couple things happen. We have Gail Kim officially uh, retiring and relinquishing the title, so that leaves the knockouts division wide open, which will be interesting. Uh, Eli Drake defended the title against Petey Williams. Really fun match where they're obviously all of Canada on the side of Petey Williams, which is cool. And Dan Lambert continuing to talk an awful lot with that America top team. And look, I'll say this. It's different, and I like it. It's different, and I like it because you're bringing in all these fighters and everything, and Moose is still going at him. Mm-hmm. So, with with all the different changes that the company is undergoing, especially when they had to do tapings in Canada, not everyone could go to Canada for various reasons. They're making it work. I like the flashback segments they're showing, stuff like that. So, um, you know, we had to had to give credit there as well. So it's it's going to be interesting to see uh, how the rest of the tapings from Canada play out before they go back to Orlando in January, I believe. Hey, they they're making sure they hold it strong. Everybody keeps thinking every time you hear news, oh, impacts folding, it's over, it's over, it's gone. And they constantly are like, no, we're still here. We're still going to do what we got to do. We're still going to make it happen. So there's nothing. We're not going anywhere. That's right. Well, Dale, that's been a hell of a show. I think now it's time for uh, AJ Styles, right? Uh, yeah, it's just a little um, quick interview. I didn't get a lot of time with him. We were both at the uh, food bank in Houston uh, volunteering time to uh, pack food and send it across the state to uh, help out those in need. So I just got a couple minutes to pull him aside and get his thoughts on Survivor Series and James Ellsworth. Uh, so yeah, take a listen. All right. Uh, we are here at the Houston Food Bank. I am with WWE Champion AJ Styles. How's it going, sir? Pretty good. Pretty good. I love that you brought the Survivor Series competitiveness to even here at the Food Bank. You're on Team SmackDown over here, packing up some boxes. Team Raw, I don't yeah. know. They're going I, I, a little slower than you. Yeah, I, 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 we are kicking their tail. I mean, and I'm, I'm taping the crap out of some boxes over here getting them ready. I saw you. I saw so, you. Could barely break I, your I, I don't know if you noticed it, but I wasn't ready to leave until we were called up. <laughs> so that's your mo. I feel. I think well, you know, the, perfection. Perfection. Uh, you know, I gotta have it done right, or, or I don't leave, or I finish it. Some I gotta. I can't stand it. <laughs> I like that mentality. To be honest with you, Is that shades of Sunday. 
What's that? Is that Shades of Sunday and how you're going to approach? Oh that yeah, match? Oh, of course it is. Like I'm gonna, I'm not gonna leave and until the job is done. And and I'm not saying that uh, I'll beat Brock Lesnar. I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna lose to Brock Lesnar either. I'm gonna give all that uh, he can handle. Brock Lesnar is gonna wish that he had not entered the ring with me that night because he's gonna. Wonder what it's going to take to beat AJ Styles. I guarantee that. What a crazy matchup pairing in the first place, but to only find out it's only you've only known, I guess, maybe a, a week or two now that, that you were going into this match. Right. I mean, but it's not something that you know. It's something I should have known. You know, all I got to know is who, uh, you know, when the next match is. It doesn't have to be who it is. I see. All right. Well, he's quite a guy to have one with, and I'm super excited for it. That is a great main event. It's definitely going to be a, a different match than anybody's ever seen, especially with Brock Lesnar. Um, this guy's the most powerful man probably in, in, in sports entertainment and probably one of the scariest, but that may apply to some guys. I don't really look at how big someone is or, or how scary they look or what their achievements may be. I got a job to do, and I'm going to find a way to get it done. Yeah, I hear that. I'm just afraid of how many Jimmy Johns he might be bringing with him. I don't Listen, know. I'm, that might be my Achilles heel because I love Jimmy Johns. <laughs> I love me some Jimmy Johns. It's so good. Give me a number five. I'm on it. Uh, so how long have you been in Houston? Uh, since Thursday night. I arrived Thursday night. Okay. So it's a quick little in and out. You're here till Tuesday or Wednesday or what? I am here until Wednesday morning. Then okay. I'm going to finally head home. Nice. It's been a long month for me. So. I, be- I bet, yeah. Not, uh, not a lot of rest for the champ. Well, I mean, we, you know, three weeks ago we were doing our, uh, you know, SmackDown from TV. There we went to overseas for two weeks. And from there, you know, I get home on Wednesday, leave Thursday night. It is what it is. And then, you know, this is what the champ goes through, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. And I don't envy the schedule, but I think that's the last time I saw you was Comic-Con. We talked when we were – it was your first Comic-Con that you were doing. Yes. Is that last year now? I had to yes, be last year. Last year, wow. Yeah. Time. I know. It seems like I, I know I've only been here. Well, in, in, um, in January, it'll be two years. But it feels wow. like I have been here for 10 years. Definitely more than two. Yeah. It's, That's crazy. It's nuts. It's nuts. Right, so how is the, the WWE life then overall? The, the changes you feeling right at home then? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it took a month or two for me to, to feel that way because I knew I was the new guy. But uh, now, like I said, it's like I've been here for 10 years. And we just had a, a departure from WWE, James Ellsworth. He, he had a big feud with you. Right. And you know what, man? I, 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 James Ellsworth, a great guy, done exactly what was asked of him every time. And, I gotta, and I'll be the first one to tell you it wasn't easy for him because he took a beating for me. That's no joke. Um, but he had a, a great time when he was here. And he embraced it, loved it, lived his dream. Good for him, man. I wish nothing but the best for him. Yeah. I mean, it's a, a wonderful place for him to be and to get to do all of that. Seems I've only heard great things about him. So Such seems like a great guy. To a better Such guy. a great guy. Well, great. Well, thank you for your time. I know you got to get back to that assembly line. Oh, yeah. Don't let Team Raw get ahead of you now. Yeah, I, think, I don't know who's handling it, but I can see it slowing up. Well, they look like they're seven, so they may not know. Well, I did have someone, you know, get my spot, you know, an, an adult. but He, he already bailed. Be, he's already gone. So. <laughs> well, good luck at Survivor Series. I'm so happy to see you here, and uh, thanks for your time, man. Thank you. And that was Dale Rutledge with AJ Styles and, of course, talking a little bit about James Ellsworth as well. We really hope you enjoyed this episode. We wanted to get it up to you before Thanksgiving because, obviously, we're going to all do our own separate thing and enjoy the holiday. So we hope you can enjoy this as well throughout the rest of the week. Uh, We are at Compadre Show on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Wrestling Compadres. Make sure you follow Dragon Wagon at It's Dragon Wagon. Check out the other shows. It's such a cool network because it's an eclectic group of shows if you like different types of entertainment you're gonna love dragon wagon there's everything you could ask for uh you'll dig that for sure so jay washington why don't you put yourself over i definitely will Uh, find me on facebook instagram and twitter at mr jay washington m-r-j-a-y-w-a-s-h-i-n-g-t-o-n check out the trusty sidekick podcast that's on itunes and everywhere and also i'm thinking about getting back in the ring so uh if you want to donate some black kick pads uh, what (laughs) yeah some kick pads with some size 13 wrestling boots because uh i'm gonna either hold a kickstart or see if somebody gonna donate them send them my way because i'm getting back in the ring i lost all my wrestling stuff so i gotta recollect it oh that's right you had had that situation sure i'm about to get back in the ring working on the gear now but you know, boots and kick or kick pads are the main thing. So, yeah, I'm putting the call out to the Compadres fans. Well, Dale, didn't you say you had some boots and kick pads you were trying to get rid of? Oh, yeah. W- w- what a weird coincidence. Uh-huh. <laughs> Put yourself on. Uh, I am The Walking Dale on Instagram and Twitter. You can also find uh, Ringside Pop on AfterBuzz TV. Season 1 has wrapped. 
but we will be back with season two right after I come back home from Japan. So make sure to catch up and be ready for that. All right, we dig that. Of course, you can follow me at Jay Quasto on all social medias. This weekend, if you're in Southern California, I'm going to be at the Irvine Improv Friday, Saturday, Sunday. My good buddy Brad Williams is headlining. I'll be opening for him. It's going to be such a fun weekend. Thanksgiving weekend's always a good party. And Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, uh, Milestone, on Sunday, December 3rd. It's one of our biggest tapings of the year. I cannot wait to be there to call those matches. Otherwise, my comedy album, QuastoAlbum.com. If you pick it up, I'd appreciate it. And uh, we had a great blood drive this past weekend at the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Just a reminder, no matter where you live in the country or the world, there's a children's hospital close by that could really use your blood to help kids. Every time you donate blood, it could help up to three children who are in need. So keep that in mind as well. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for, oh, of course, you got to follow Scott Narver at Scott Narver. He'll be back very, very soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We love you. Oh, no, wait, we're not done yet. We got Patreon Palskis we got to talk about, Dale. <laughs> We're not done yet. <laughs> Don't you forget again, Johnny. No, I'm not going to forget again. Here's the deal. Thank you very much to everyone who has uh, donated to the Patreon. Peter Morris, number one, the new artwork. Go to petermorris.us to check out all his artwork or follow him at pocket underscore Wookie. All the $5 donations. We want to thank you. Chuck Schofield, Wayne Lynch, Carl Bond, Tom Hader, Kevin Nuzo, Pete Garrett, and Tony Griggs. Our $8 donations, which means, uh, you know, just uh we love you just three dollars more than everyone else no um <laughs> you'll, you'll be getting uh tweets from us and all that alex pierce tina keys nick glancy nick the compadre the original name edmund Cayley, daniel lasnas and twenty dollar donation arguably uh possibly the very first compadre ever uh he gets our bonus episode as well as he gets sending questions and suggestions that goes out to our man, Johan Pena. And a lot of you already know him. He's uh, he's very, very frequently tweeting us, and we always have conversations with him. Met him at WrestleMania. Met him a couple times now, and he's the best. And $25 donation, still the top donor. She's going to do a monthly Skype call with the compadre of her choice. This month, it's going to be me. Uh, we're going to do it sometime this week. And... You are know. you are you topless in this or how? Uh, that's that what I was about to ask. Are you have clothes on? I have offered it. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Got to get back to her. Um, <laughs> and that sadly, is- that sadly that decreases the value of the pack. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you want to see Johnny's nipples, it's now down to seventeen dollars and eighty six cents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She, she won't be doing 20, 25 after that. Uh, our girl Nuggets donating twenty five dollars. We're going to do a Skype call later on this week, as well as uh, when we do the bonus episodes, she will get access to that. So. Go to patreon.com slash compadres if you want to help out the show. It really, really does help because, number one, we're on independent podcast network, so we can help support that. And on top of it, we can put more money into promoting the show so we can continue to grow. So it's a beautiful thing, guys. So for Jay Washington, for Scott Narver, for Dale Rutledge, and for Liquid Jake and Dragon Wagon, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We love you. We'll see you next week. Keep chasing your dreams. Eat that turkey. Dragon Wagon.